Skinner and Philip Zimbardo. Um, yeah, and Philip Zimbardo, um, these are well known, you know, for example, um, Philip Zimbardo is known for the, you know, Stanford prison experiment, um, which is, you know, social psychology, and then you have, you know, classical conditioning and, you know, child rearing and so on. So these are really well known psychologists and, you know, child development therapists that we have in our specific society. So it's pretty well known, it's international and it's it's legit, I promise. <laughs> it's a really good society to be in. And so another thing that is important to note that, you know, um, <laughs> Caitlin put the laughing face emoji. Okay, so another thing to also kind of be aware is that Psychi is also partnered up and associated with other, you know, societies that are very huge in America. Um, so we have the Association of College Honor Society. Um, we are also affiliated with APA, if you know, um, the American Psychological Association. We also are part of um, an affiliate of Association for Psychological Science. And then our sister honor society is going to be Psi Beta, which is essentially Psi Chi, but for junior and community colleges. Um, and then once you kind of go into a university settings, that's when Psychi um, would be part of, you know, your society as well. Um, I do believe they're separate. So if you are here because you are um, interested in joining, if you were in Psi Beta, I believe you would have to reapply for Psychi um, just because they are two different honor societies. Alrighty. Um, so I kind of did want to start off with our mission and purpose. Um, well, before I continue, does anyone have any questions so far? Everyone good? Good? Okay, seems like everyone's good. Alrighty, so I wanted to continue with Psychi's mission and purpose. Um, so the mission statement that is directly from Psychi's website is, our mission is to recognize and promote excellence in the science and application of psychology. So that is going to be whether that's, you know, research, whether that's um, developing professionals within the psychology field, or um, even our, I forgot to introduce her, but Kelly Campbell, I'm not too sure if you guys know who Kelly Campbell is. She is our advisor for Psychi. Um, she's actually in the child development department and I'm in the child development department as well. So it does kind of extend beyond psychology. Um, so then, uh, you know, this is just kind of to help benefit you guys in the job opportunities and in an academic setting um, and to provide you as much research experience within the field of psychology. So that would be our mission statement. And then we have our purpose statement, which is Psychi is an international honor society whose purpose shall be to encourage, stimulate, and maintain excellence in scholarship of the individual members in all fields, particularly in psychology, and to advance the science of psychology. So pretty straightforward. Um, we also they also have another um, statement for inclusivity and diversity. So not not only does Psychi also, you know, promote excellence in the science of psychology or research, but they also promote inclusivity and diversity and the fact that they want people to, um, you know, basically fight any injustices like racial injustice. And, you know, it's not just racial injustice. It could be like, um, it could be anything. Like it could also be like gender inequality or, you um, any of those like kind of advocating areas that we have nowadays. Um, so they do kind of fight for those values within Psychi. And um, that has been shown in some of our previous events that we've had. Um, for example, one that I could think of from last year is they did Women in STEM. We did an event about women in STEM and kind of trying to encourage women to participate more in STEM and to, you know, really take a lead in the science field. Um, and then before that, we also had a Black Lives Matter event where we talked about, you know, how to be a good ally, how to support um, if you can't, you know, protest, especially because it happened during COVID mostly. Well, it didn't happen. It's always been there, but it became a lot bigger. I would say the movement, you know, kind of started to become 
a lot more advanced than it always had been before. So these are just also examples of how we include um, diversity and inclusivity in our morals as a um, society. Okie dokie, and then um, we are gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to Melody and she's going to be talking about the benefits. If you do decide to join Saikai or if you're already in Saikai and you don't necessarily know the benefits yet. So Melody will go ahead and talk about that right now. Yeah, okay. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have control over it. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so I tried to list out a lot of the typical benefits that are typically advertised for Psychi members. Um, we try to have like our events open to most of everyone, um, at least. So um, that way, like I think Emily said before, even like non-members with like relevant interests like in the GRE are able to, um, go to our events, but as far as like being a member and with like the organization, um, there's a lot of benefits, I think, and a lot of information that are typically shared with members. Um, firstly, you really do get a better picture of um, graduate programs and graduate applications. Um, so if you're interested in like master's programs um, and especially like uh, PhD programs, they tend to advertise a lot of information and the various types of programs that are out there. Um, they also sometimes post job openings as well um, for recently uh, graduated BAs and uh, graduate students. And so they really try to focus on um, like professional development skills, sometimes like holding workshops and uh, giving you an idea of jobs as well. Uh, they also have a lot of funding. Um, I personally haven't sought out funding because we um, typically have pretty good funding on campus. Uh, usually like the OSR, the Office of Student Research tends to um, fund a lot of travel and research activities. But if you happen to be like conducting a large research project or if you um, need help for conference travel, which I know that some, um, some states we will not fund, <laughs> right? So like some places we go to, we won't fund. Um, or if you need like financial assistance for school, they um, have a lot, a large pool of money, uh, but various deadlines. So being a member uh, allows you access to some extra funding in that uh, regard. Then there's also typically at um, some of the conferences, I'm mainly familiar with the Western Psychological Association, but there tends to be like psychi specific um, events and tabling um, get togethers at those conferences, as well as being able to um, have a poster go for like certain Psychi specific awards, or you can um, present a poster as a member of Psychi. So there's a lot of benefits in that when you actually go to conferences and present research, it's, it's better to be a Psychi member than not. Um, also, they do post a lot of research opportunities. So they have a career center um, part of the website that you're able to take a look at if you're interested in like the job or research openings. They have a research collaborative exchange, which hasn't been used as of fre frequently um, as of lately, but it's where people can post, um, you know, projects that they might be working on. And then they also have the Ion Psychi um, web journal that typically gets sent out, I think, every like quarter or so. Um, and that gives an idea of like current hot topics like in psychology and then also um, various people that are interested in their like their own specific field. So it gives you an idea of like what research is being conducted. And then typically as well, like some last points, I don't think I've ever met any, like if you guys are interested in graduate school, I don't think I've ever met a graduate student that's like not in Psychi, um, especially those who are like going towards PhD. Like it tends to be kind of just the norm. Um, so I definitely would recommend that because I think it's kind of like expected of graduate students. It shows like initiative. It shows, um, that you're getting involved, you know, that you're trying to like be a part of something more than like just going to school every day. Um, so I definitely think there's just an inherent benefit in being a part of it. And then also you can get to know us and then we have like a ton of experience um, and, you know, applying to graduate school, getting funding, you know, doing research with various people on campus. Um, and not that you couldn't contact us if you weren't members, but you can definitely get to know us a bit better. Um, and kind of like what our research interests are. Like I've been here like forever. So I'm a gold mine <laughs> for information if you have any questions. Um, and then also, as Emily mentioned as well, you get to add it to your CV too. Um, and then you can go to the next slide. Does anyone have any questions about any of that at all? 
Um, it's like a huge chunk of information, but a lot of that's like available on their website as well. No. Cool. Um, oh, I don't know why the formatting is messed up. It was fine on my phone. Um, so this is just um, a picture of some of the available funding for undergraduates specifically. Um, they have a lot of research grants um, that are available. Uh, so if you're, like I said, if you're trying to do like a project for like your honors thesis or for your master's, well, that would be for graduate, but for any type of thesis project, or if your um, professor like needs funding and wants you to apply, they have a lot of various different types of research grant funding. Um, and then they also have an undergraduate scholarship as well, which is typically like in the summer um, beforehand. So if some of you are like freshmen, sophomore, juniors, then this could be something that you could apply for um, next summer. And then it asks for like the typical things. So you just have to prove like financial need, you would need to have your curriculum vitae, um, your transcript, and also like um, how much tuition you're supposed to be paying. You'd have to write a few essays and then you would also have to get a letter of recommendation from Dr. Campbell specifically for us. And then you can go to the next one. And then for the graduate funding, it's pretty similar. Um, so again, with the research grants, they also offer those to graduate students. So that could be like MA or MS students or PhD students. Um, and then they also have graduate scholarships, which are typically around like the same summer deadlines. Um, and then they also have one if you are, um, uh, what is it, APAGS, which I forgot what the acronym stands for, but you basically would just have to join like an extra society and then you would have access to um, apply for that uh, scholarship. And that's around, I think this is like first or second year graduate students. So even if you're planning on going to graduate school next year, there's still um, scholarships available for you then too. And then I believe that's it. Does anyone have any questions about any of that? For the graduate grants, you have to have your undergrad completed already. So um, for the graduate grants, it's for students who are in graduate school. So if you're like currently taking your MA um, or MS um, or if you're in a PhD program. So it's not like for students who like have graduated. Yeah, it's for like current graduate students. Yeah. And then Melody, yeah. would you mind also explaining to them um, why or what, I mean, because you mentioned how some, not all states, CSUSB will fund for you to go travel and, you know, go to conferences. Can you explain how this might be of a benefit? And um, especially if you want to share your own experience, that would be yeah. great. Yeah, so um, yeah, I don't know like the specifics of it. And like, I, un I understand the sentiment of like the CSU system, but they essentially don't allow like, travel funding and like conference funding to states that are like deemed problematic, I guess, you know, they have like problematic laws. Um, so typically against like LGBTQ plus folk, um, abortion rights, stuff like that. So for example, I went to Texas in 2019 to um, present at the um, Association for Women in Psychology and I could not seek funding from the OSR because the CSU will not would not give me any money because it's from a state that's now well even more so now has um, problematic issues um so this would have been a really if I had known about it this would have been a really good opportunity for me to have applied for the travel um like the plane fees the conference fees um my Airbnb which was expensive um, yeah, so it would have been really useful for me if I had applied for, for some conference travel, um, especially because I just happened, they just happened to be holding it in a state where it was just going to be more difficult um, for me to go. So if that happens to you, this is definitely like a resource you want to be aware of because um, I'm definitely not the only one like I've heard of other students who um, like they can't control where their conference is, you know, like where their conference is going. So, um, yeah. Does that kind of answer your question, Emily, what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted them to kind of, cause I think when we, when you, when we said that, like not CSUSB doesn't cover all states, I think it's good for them to be aware, like what kind of, I get an idea of what kind of states aren't really funded by CSUSB and how this could really have like, saved you money <laughs> um, oh yeah no it would have saved me a lot of money like I it was just expensive <laughs> like it was yeah. expensive going to Texas and it was right before the pandemic so I actually yeah. chatted with our uh 
taxi cab about it <laughs> but yeah. right before everything shut down so that was yeah. interesting and then to kind of just add on to Melody with all these grants um, as an undergraduate and graduate, if you're going into a grad program or you're writing like an undergraduate thesis or a graduate thesis and you're kind of creating your own research or you even want to go off to like a summer research, um, you know, like program, it is always good to kind of apply for grants and have this money to kind of help support you in your journey of, you know, whatever goal you want to have at the end, whether that be as simple as completing your undergraduate thesis, normal thesis, helping a professor secure funding, or even just kind of to hold you over um, during a research program all summer, which sometimes are not paid for. Um, so again, this is just very important to understand and know because it could potentially help you um, in your journey. Um, and then I did have a, we did have a question by Caitlin. If I graduate yeah. next spring, 2022 and get into a graduate program in fall 2022 would I apply for the 2023 for the grant if I needed it um yeah so I assume that you could apply for the scholarship um because it seemed because it's in July it would be like right before you would enter um like your graduate program so if you're like definitely accepted into a program um I assume you should be able to apply for the graduate scholarship as far as the grants go, um, I'm assuming that like most grants, you would need to have a pretty substantial amount of work done like on a project or like a proposed project in order to like apply for a grant. So they don't just like give money willy nilly, like you typically have to like state um, exactly what the funds are gonna be used for. So that would just completely depend on like at what point you have an idea of like those um that project and like what you would need in order to complete that project so I don't think that's necessarily determined like by year um it's kind of just whenever you would need it if that makes sense yeah yeah and then just to kind of mention also, although CSUSB like our SciKai, a lot of our events are for everybody. Um, these grants and like opportunities to submit, you know, some manuscripts into certain journals are only for SciKai members. So that's um, one of the benefits of actually joining SciKai is that you have more access to, you know, these kind of grants and um, opportunities to submit manuscripts into journals and um, all that kind of stuff. So that's another great thing about this. <laughs> Alrighty, and then. We have Annabelle that's going to be talking about um, CSUSB's chapter specifically and our future events. Hey everybody, I'm going to be talking about our future events. Emily, can you press next, please? Okay, so for the fall, we have we have a couple events coming up. We had our GRE Tricks and Trips workshops with Vince, where we talked about tricks and trips of how to like study for the GRE and some sample questions. If you missed that, don't worry, it's gonna come back in the spring. That way you guys can get that information. You know, at CSUSB, there's a lot of, there's not that many resources for studying for the GRE. And um, because of that, our scores are a lot lower compared to other, other schools. And that way, that's why we wanted to focus on like the GRE. So if you missed that, like, please come to the next one. That way you can get that and you can be ready for graduate school. Um, Another thing we had is this meeting. It's also gonna come back in the spring. If you um, wanna see us again, or if you wanna get more information about how to apply or about scholarships or resources or anything like that. Coming up, we have our PhD panel and our graduate panel. A week from, on Tuesday of next week, we have our PhD panel, um, which is coming up, which are current and former PhD students. Um, so most of the times the, the um, most of the times the PhD students had been honor students for with Dr. Campbell. That's how she knew about them. So they were with us and I contacted I contacted them and they're willing to come and like share their experience as well as like some some advice to give to students as well. Um, can you press next, please? This is the flyer for their PhD PhD panel that's coming up next week on Tuesday. Um, we're gonna have um, um, individuals, PhD students from a variety of different disciplines, clinical psychology from both a PhD, from both a sci, sci D and maybe a PhD. We also have integrative um, physiology and neuroscience, social and health psychology and behavioral neuroscience. So if you're interested in one of those or expanding your knowledge into a PhD program, please come to this event and you'll be able to, you know, have your questions be answered by these 
um, individuals. Can you press next? For the spring, we have a lot more events coming up. Again, we have our GRE Tricks and Trips workshop, our Saikai meeting again, a tradition that the honor a tradition that the Saikai um, board always does is the Love Symposium and the Honors Program Seminar, um, which is where we give information. Um, Dr. Campbell speaks on the Love Symposium and for the Honors Program, um, we talk about um, the Honors Program, how like the benefits of the Honors Program as well as like from former honor students as well. Um, and coming up, this is a new one. Uh, we have a new speaker coming up, a presenter to talk about his experience and his book as well, Victor Villasenor. So we're really excited to bring him in. Um, we also have the induction ceremony. So if you've been here since 2019, uh, if you've been a member since 2019, um, unfortunately we didn't have an induction ceremony. So we're hoping to bring that back. I'm going to share a link right now to see if people would be interested in an, indu an induction ceremony, which is to welcome like new members um, to see like if they would be interested in like, you know, getting that recognition to be, you know, recognized in Saikai. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Annabelle. And then, um, so yeah, we have a lot of really new and exciting um, events that we are bringing this year. Um, so Victor Vian Senor, I'm, I'm pretty excited about Dr. Campbell, our advisor is one of the ones that basically, um, she's she used to always bring Jane Elliott. I don't know if you guys are aware of the brown eye blue eyed experiment. Um, so she used to always bring Jane Elliott, but because of COVID and a lot of issues, um, I'm assuming it wasn't as, um, you know, achievable as it used to be. So now she's going to bring Victor Villaseñor, which is an author of the book called Reign of Gold. And um, essentially, I haven't read it yet, but I purchased it already. So I'm reading it beforehand. And if you're really, from my understanding is if you're really into like first generation Latin type of um, stories and kind of like overcoming certain hurdles um, that come along with, you know, trying to transition into, um, you know, being a first generation immigrant and so on. Um, that you would be very into this type of book. And Dr. Campbell was like, you out of all people, like you are really gonna love this book, you better read it. And I was like, okay, noted. So I'm very excited about that. And then um, I'm not too sure if Annabelle touched upon it, but the PhD panel and the graduate panel are two different types of um, programs that we are looking into. So the PhD panel, as she explained, is going to be old, um, not old, current or already graduated PhD students. And the graduate panel will specifically be for um, the graduate programs we have at CSUSB. So for that one, we're going to have students that are currently in the programs, for example, like Melody is part of the um, psychological science, correct? master's program. Um, I'm part of the MACD. Um, for example, like I spoke on it last year for MACD, and then I believe other people spoke for school psych. So we're going to have those come for the graduate panel if you're interested in continuing your education at CSUSB. And then any questions about this one? Uh, any questions about anything we just talked about? When will we know about the GRE study session? Um, I'm pretty sure we will fix a date with Vince, that's his name, um, with over winter. So then we could figure out a date for spring. Um, we were unsure how many times we wanted him to kind of come around. Um, and I mean, it might be exciting if you guys are interested in seeing him more often in the Coltrix link that Annabelle will provide. You guys could include that in there because there's going to be a section where um, you could include, you know, possible events that you're interested in. If you'd like to see him more often, um, I would say include it there. Um, and then we will send out, okay, yeah. And then GR, uh, Annabelle already talked about it on the bottom. So yeah, that's going to be a short survey. Um, and then you, if you could just please fill that out super quickly and that way we get a little bit more of a communication with what you guys want and um, what we could do for you and to basically help enhance your experience with Saikai here at CSUSB. Okie dokie. Oh, so how to apply. So I'm not too sure, um, let me see. How many of you are here because you're interested in applying? You could do like an emoji, a chat, it doesn't really, whichever. Or are you all already members? Okay, so we have some people here that are interested. Awesome, oh, we have a lot of people, that's exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over this. 
Um, so all the information that we got besides, you know, our chapter um, and, you know, the events we have coming up, all the information we, we received in this presentation are all from psychi.org. So if you have any questions about the grants, the scholarships, um, the journals and all that information and so on, um, you, you can find it on psychi.org. Um, you could also apply directly at that website as well. Um, so if when you want to apply, you will go to psychi.org. Um, the first thing you will do is click on member once you, you know, are on the website. And then you will click on member and scroll down. And I don't know if you see that arrow, it's that yellow arrow right there. You click on become a member. Um, so when you click on become the member, you will see requirements for membership. So again, this is a honor society. So we do have certain requirements and expectations from the members that are applying for it. So um, the first thing being that you must be enrolled in a major or minor in psychology program or program psychological in nature. So like I said, um, you know, even our advisor is child development. You know, I'm now in child development. So, um, you know, that, for instance, is not directly psychology, but it is psychological in nature. Um, granted, I did graduate with a psychology degree and just moved over to child development. Um, but uh, of course, child development is considered under it. Um, another thing is you must have completed at least three semesters or equivalent of a full time college coursework. Um, you need to have at least nine semester credit hours or equivalent of psychology courses. Um, you also need to have a cumulative GPA that is at the top 35% of your class, that being, um, you know, considering sophomore, junior and senior um, classes. Um, and then that's usually a minimum GPA of 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. Um, so the minimum GPA will be 3.0. Um, and then also it, it would be considered like top 35% of your class. And then um, you must also, so you know how CSUSB has like your major GPA. So like if you're in psychology, your GPA for psychology courses, and then it has like your CSUSB GPA. So you need to have a 3.0 in your CSUSB GPA, which is overall in all the courses you have and a 3.0 GPA average for your psychology courses and so on. Any questions about requirements as an undergraduate? Haley? Alrighty, Haley. Um, so once you submit your application to psychi.org, what's going to happen is that this application goes directly to Dr. Campbell, which is our advisor. And she basically goes through, she doesn't do them one by one, she kind of does them in chunks. So she kind of, um, yeah, I believe she waits like every two or one month and then she kind of just starts accepting everybody that applied um, who have met the qualifications. So just hold on tight. Um, I'm assuming our next round is going to be coming up soon because the last time she sent me any emails about new members was about a month ago. So hang tight. I'm sure she's going to get to you soon. I'm positive she did get your application. If anything, I'll write your name down and kind of... Um, just if you want to make sure that your name is in our um, our list and I'm writing your name down right now. <laughs> Alrighty, and then um, I'll touch base with her on that as well. Okay, so if there's no questions for your qualifications as an undergraduate, we also have, so of course, once you apply as an undergraduate, it does kind of transition once you get into you know graduate school. Like I, I was in psych high when I was, believe my senior year of um, my bachelor's degree, so my undergrad, and it just transitioned over. But if you are in grad school and you are interested in joining, um, they're going to be, you know, oh, this is transfer students. So is anyone a transfer student? I am. Okay. okay I so am too. Got it. So we have transfer students here. So there are going to be, um, they're fairly similar in the fact that you do need like also a 3.0 average in both your CSUSB and your um, major GPA. The only difference is that you do need to have a certain amount of credits. Um, so let me go ahead and go over that right now. So if the new institution transfers um, both credits and grades follow the same requirements as an undergraduate student applicant. So that's where I was talking about the GPA. Um, 
And then you need at least 12 semester credit hours or nine psychology credit hours or equivalent at the new institution before you actually are able to apply as a Psychi member. So you do need to kind of, um, like I said, I applied my senior year. I was a transfer student myself um, from like two different universities. I went from Cal State LA to a community college to CSUSB, um, but I needed to make sure that I had a certain amount of credits which is why I didn't apply for Psychi until my senior year um, in order to finally get accepted into it. And then of course, maintain at least a 3.0 GPA. So again, if you are a transfer student, you need to at least complete 12 semester credit hours and nine psychology credit hours or equivalent at the new institution. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, thank you. Of course, yeah. So I'm hoping this is information that you didn't know before and now you're like, okay, awesome. Now I know when I'm going to apply or I have an idea of how close you are to, you know, submitting your application. Um, and then if you were already a member of Psychi, so like I said, I came from Cal State LA um, and I, I went to a community college to transfer to CSUSB because I felt like I'm huge on like the fit and the environment. So I just thought that Cal State LA wasn't for me. Um, I know it's for some people, but I realize I don't like the city. Um, so because of that, um, if you were similar to me and maybe let's say you were in Psychi at another university, just you would at that point, you would have to contact the faculty advisor at the new institution, and you're going to have to complete an online transfer of membership form, because at that point, you're switching from one chapter to another. So um, I'm not too sure if any of you guys are in that boat, um, but it's not unlikely, which is why I'm mentioning it. And then this is for graduate students. Um, you know, you have to be accepted or enrolled in a psychology or closely related graduate program. You must have completed nine semester credit hours um, in your graduate psychology course. You must have a GPA of 3.0. And on, honestly, in graduate courses, um, I don't know about your guys' program, Melody, but like for us, if we get a B, like you are technically like on the brink of like, potentially like academic probation. So it's really hard to kind of get a 3.0 in general when you're in graduate school, especially because, you know, they choose you to kind of be, you know, studious students and so on. So um, yeah, so I, I would assume if you're in a graduate program, you already have at least a 3.0 um, and you then you need to meet the graduate requirements. So again, a 3.0 or above and have nine semester credit units. Oops, got it. Alrighty. And then, um, so again, kind of let's go back to the website. Once you go to become a member and you see all this information, which is going to have, um, you know, what will qualify you in order to actually apply to Psychi. If you scroll all the way down, there's going to be a button that looks exactly like this that says apply now. Um, when you click apply now, it's going to direct you to the form where you could submit your application to be part of Psychi. Um, and so once you apply, I know someone said they already applied. Once you apply and you receive your email from Dr. Campbell, which is our um, advisor at CSUSB, that you are accepted, you are now going to have to submit a $55 Psychi Society membership fee. And this $55, is going to be due to the organization itself. It's going to ensure, um, you know, lifetime membership in this organization. So that's that's a completely separate thing than our chapter fee, which is going to be at CSUSB. Used to be before that our chapter fee was twenty five dollars, and you would have to submit it in a mailbox in the psychology department. However, we have postponed that. Um, I believe that if you were, you you know, if you were a member in like 2019, 2020, and so on, and you already applied, and um, we postponed this for quite some time now, um, it's still unsure whether or not we're still going to collect those fees once we're fully in school. Um, but at the current moment, we just know it's postponed. And I think it kind of also makes no sense for you guys to have to pay a membership fee you know, once time has passed. Um, so we will get back to you guys on that. 
especially because that $25 was made specifically to kind of help with the induction ceremony, which is, you know, to offer you guys dinner and to have candles and all that kind of equipment. But the induction ceremony um, until we are fully in person will have to be online. Um, so we just don't see how you know, submitting $25 would benefit you if it's going to be an online induction ceremony. Um, but we are still going to make it exciting. So don't think that's going to be boring. <laughs> it's still going to be fun. Um, but yeah, but you do have to submit your $55 membership fee to Saikai Society, which is going to be online once you get your acceptance. And then other than that, we don't, we're done. Um, if you have any questions, I know it's a Saikai CSUSB at gmail.com, but I'm going to go ahead and include another email. Um, if you have any questions about Saikai, contact me if you'd like. Um, so it's going to be, and I'm going to put it in the chat right now, just because um, I'm currently trying to get access to that email account and um, it's causing me a little bit of a difficult time because um, we had to transfer like from one person to another, but the easiest way to contact me would be through my email, which is Emily, and it's spelled a little differently. So E M E L Y dot Lugo L U G O at C S U S B dot E D U, um, and then you could also follow us at Psychi C S U S B, and you could also message us through there. And then um, Clarissa, which is in charge of our Instagram page, kind of relays that information to us. So if you have any questions, um, Phil, you could, this is like free time. <laughs> and then also just try, uh, if you can, fill out the Quatrix link and um, it will really help us out. And, you know, being able to get an idea of what you guys want out of Psychi, what you guys want from us and how we could help support you. Any last words, you guys, <laughs> Melody, Annabelle, Rosalia? Um, I don't do, would we be okay sending the slides to everyone, like by email? Yeah, especially because yeah. we don't, I don't know if we're going to post the video. Yet, yeah, but. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I know that Rosalia wants to share it with the honors cohort, correct, Rosalia? And we could totally do that. And I'm more than willing to send these slides over as well. You could also find this information at, um, you know, saikai.org. And then um, for the events, we will be advertising, advertising them as well as time goes on and kind of providing official dates um, once we have those planned out. Um, but yeah, I don't see a problem doing that. We could do that. Ready? And then Elizabeth, if you, yeah, um, would you, I believe, Oh, so if you're not already a member, I don't have your email. So yes, put it in the chat um, if you want this information. I think in the Qualtrics link as well, um, it might ask for your email, I believe. So we can send it through there. Okay, yeah, that would probably be better. So I have it all in one place. <laughs> and if not, it has your email. And then I could just add, you know, the usual coyote.csusb. Got it, there you go. Okay. And then if you don't have any questions, you are free to go. Um, we'll stay in case anyone does have any questions. Thank you. Of course, thank you. So oh, I have a question. Um, so this psychology, uh, the Psychi is separate from the school's honor society? Yeah, so I think you're, are you referring to like the university? There's like three different types of honors that you could be in. Um, so you have yeah. us, which is the International Honor Society, which is internationally known. Um, you have the university mm -hmm. honors, which is going to be, you know, the cum laude, summa cum laude and magna cum laude. Um, and that's going to be based off of your CSUSB um, GPA. And then the psychology honors um, is going to be a program specifically for your department, psychology department that you apply to. And then you get accepted into, and then you need to create like an undergraduate thesis in order to complete um, and graduate with psychology honors, well, honors for your department. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Okay. Because I know there's like different honors, and now I was gonna confuse. And I know that there's one of them where like um, you have to take this required class to be in it or something. So, what would you guys recommend me to do? Like, do all of them? Just do one? Because <laughs> well, I'm not I, sure. Like, you know. I think all of us graduated with all of them, with all three of them. Am I correct? Psychi psychology honors and mm-hmm. the university honors so you could do all three um so I was gonna say it, it kind of just also depends on like what you're intending on doing so like joining psychi I think is great in order to get like in general like benefits especially if you can afford like the 50 to 55 dollar fee and everything university honors just comes naturally so like if you happen to have like a 3.5 gpa or above typically it's just going to like come with that I don't think there's like an extra fee it's like like Emily said like the magna cum laude summa cum laude and then just cum laude I think um so that's kind of like a natural thing if your GPA is high enough but the honors in the psych department if you're very interested in like conducting research if you're interested in a graduate program where you're going to conduct research primarily a PhD or like the psych science program Um, and you need a thesis to put like on your CV, if you need like a letter of rec from like a faculty, then that's something that you would want to, you would want to do. So like the honors in the psych department specifically, that application is, um, it's in the spring, right? I believe. So the classes that you have to take, um, you could take, you could have either, either taken like this semester or potentially next semester. Usually people do the honors program as a senior, you can do it as a junior. Um, so you could potentially like have time to take those courses or it'll just be like contingent upon you getting like an A or a B or so like in those classes. Um, so, but that that's like primarily if you really want to like go somewhere where that research experience is gonna be useful for you, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. Thank you guys so yeah. much. Yeah. Ray, Raylene, Raylene, right? Yes. Ma, do you mind us asking what, you know, our, your goal is, like, at the end? Um, I want to become a psychiatrist. So, okay. PhD, like, for sure. <laughs> I it. don't know if, if I want to do my master's, though. Um, okay. But hopefully, like, you know, being part of psychi and everything, I can get a better idea of what I want to do, so. Yeah, and what year are you? Um, 2023. Okay, so you are actually, I would say, at a pretty good, um, you know, yeah, so you're at a pretty good year um, mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, when you're going to graduate, so I think it is completely possible for you to be able to do all three, especially with your goals that you have, which is um, a PhD. So mm-hmm. I would highly recommend, you're talking about a psychology, an honors class that requires you to attend a course, that's going to be psychology honors. So that's honors okay. for the department of psychology. Um, and that's basically, you're gonna graduate with an undergraduate thesis. Mm -hmm. And this is going to really help you get into any type of graduate program, which is a PhD, even like a master's level program. Um, And if you want to be a psychiatrist, that would really benefit you as well um, in that process. So I would we are going to have that information session in the spring. So keep an eye on that. Um, And you could apply to it as a junior if you'd like. I know our, our Annabelle, which is our vice president, did it as a junior herself. Okay. And I did it as a senior. Um, it, it's totally fine doing whichever you would like. Um, and that would kind of also help with psychi because psychi and psychology department, they kind of communicate amongst one another pretty closely. Um, mm-hmm. And then again, the university one is pretty organic. So you're in a really good position where you can potentially do it all and it shouldn't cause much problems. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll mention too that you should also start speaking to um, faculty about your interests like in psychiatry specifically, because at least for um, like the other psychology PhDs, um, you can go straight from undergrad to a PhD. I, there's an assumption that you don't do that, that you have to get, get your master's first, but for a lot of psych PhDs, you don't need to get your master's first, and if anything, it's just a waste of money. So I would start um, speaking to some of the more biopsych or neuropsych faculty, because they probably had students who are interested in like 
psychiatry specifically and uh-huh. what the pathway to get to that is like I don't know if it's med school or if it's like going to be something else so they'll be able to like direct you so probably like Dr. Amadeo um, and then I know I, there's other biopsych faculty maybe like Dr. Crawford um, and I would uh, like ask to meet with them so you can get an idea of like what the best path to get to psychiatry is so you can start prepping to apply it like your senior year. Mm, okay that's really helpful (laughs) because right now I'm just kind of winging it you know because I am a transfer student so um you know I'm just kind of going with the flow right now but Mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you so much yeah really quick sorry just to add on I did put the link for the psychology honors program in the chat and I think if you scroll to the bottom there's a list of faculty members that eventually you'll need a mentor if you choose to follow that route. And you can click on each faculty member and kind of read a little bit about their research interests that um, look for some that line up with yours as Melody was saying. And yeah, I think it'll be very helpful if you want to start looking at that website early on. All right, thank you guys so much. Of course, we're happy that we're able to help you out in that. And also Raylene, I was in the same position when I transferred in. Um, and I think the psychology department, honor, the honors for the department of psychology really kind of helped me basically lay a path towards PhD. And it was basically like how to get into a grad program, PhD 101. Like that's how I like to think about it. They threw me so many resources. And the way I see it is like, if I don't get into, if I don't continue to pursue this, all that information that was given to me was like, I was like, well, what do I do with this now? You know, and that's like for a graduate, a master's or a PhD for whichever. So it's really beneficial. I would recommend it. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I need, I definitely need that because also I am first year. So, um, uh, first generation. So, you know, kind of doing it. <laughs> But okay, cool. I will definitely do all three probably. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a 3.5 right now. So, you know, everything is, looks pretty good so far for me. Yes. All right. And feel free to contact us if you have more questions. Okay. All righty. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Of course. I heard a little kitten. <laughs> um and then Jeanette did you have any questions oh no I she I think they saved for the combo yeah they probably like also wanted to learn about it <laughs> okay I'm Alrighty. gonna stop the recording right now cool um Ooh. I think